unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna Lord, we lift up your name With our hearts full of praise Be exalted, O oh Lord Be exalted, O oh Lord, my God Hosanna
glad you came today. You're going to be glad you came today. Praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's a wonderful story there. Second Chronicles chapter 20. And we're going to begin from verses 1. I'm going to preach almost the whole chapter. Almost. Praise God. The Bible says, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, with them other besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Somebody say amen. It just came to pass one day that the Ammonites, the Moabites, and their group just decided and said, they had other auxiliaries, right? I said, let's just attack these guys. You know? And they chose to attack Jehoshaphat. They made a decision to attack Israel. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, And then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. Sea beyond Syria is about the dead, behind the dead sea, which is about... The Sodom, you know, Sodom, Sodom, Gomorrah. And the Bible says, And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is Engedi. And the Bible says, Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. The Bible says, And Jehoshaphat feared, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask for the help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, the Bible says they came to seek the Lord. Somebody say, Amen. 
Now, for those of you who must respect and honor what is happening in this particular story or experience, this man has taken over his father, Esau, and he is enjoying peace. He has won many battles. He is feared by all his neighbors. And then a couple of people come through, the Ammonites, Moabites, and there are another group of them. They say, let's attack Jehoshaphat and take over Jerusalem and Israel. And the Bible tells us that when he had, that this was a number of tribes that were coming to attack one man, like a normal human being. I didn't say born again Christian. Like a normal human being, he feared. Are you following me? And he proclaimed a what? A fast. Now, I need to show us something here. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him one day. Now, this is before. And he said to him, King Jehoshaphat, because you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord, the wrath of God is upon thee from the Lord. Jehoshaphat was a guy who used to like helping what? People. That sometimes his helping hand extended even to the ungodly. And so one seer, who you might call a present day prophet, because seer is prophecy, right? But that's not the only dimension of the prophetic. Some people don't see, but they hear. Some people don't hear, but they test. Some people don't test, but they feel. Praise God. And they are prophets in their right. Praise the Lord Jesus. Some people think that seers are the only prophets. No, 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 no. Because the Lord doesn't only communicate by vision, sight. He can communicate by ears and you hear the word. He can communicate by speech. He can even cause the word to fall on your mouth. Like the Bible says of the prophet who says, and the word of the Lord was on my tongue and was like uh, tongues of fire and stuff like that. Anyway, so prior to that, this guy had enjoyed tranquility and peace for a long time. And, but there is this one issue and problem he has. He likes helping ungodly people. And then one time some guy is seeking the Lord. We don't know whether it was of the Lord or not. But he gets a vision. And in that vision he sees that Jehoshaphat likes to help the ungodly and loves them that hate the Lord. And the man comes and tells him that the wrath of the Lord is coming upon you to destroy you. Now you see verse 20. Put yourself in Jehoshaphat's shoes. In the verses before, They've told you that you're going to be destroyed, annihilated from the face of the earth by the wrath of the Lord because you love the ungodly and love them that hate God. Verses 20, they are telling you Ammonites, Moabites, and the auxiliaries are planning to attack you. In your normal thinking, you'd think, isn't this the judgment of the Lord coming upon the managa. Because it connects, right? They warn you the wrath of the Lord is coming. And as they warn you that the wrath of the Lord is coming, true to form, in a couple of days or weeks, we are standing in a situation where a bigger army, many times bigger than your army, is coming against you. And of course, if people have heard and it has crossed the border, as a spy has come and told you that they've crossed the borders already, your enemies are in your camp, they're in the area, they're almost killing you. And there's a third eye, a third individual observing these stories from afar. Who knows both and was there when the seer was warning you that they are going to destroy you, Jehoshaphat, and he's heard the story of the Ammonites coming through. Somebody can easily connect. Ah, the Lord is on him. Ah, you see. We told you. By the way, there are people who love They love calamity and doom befalling people. And then they say, Sabagamba, didn't I tell you? You understand what I'm saying? Because some people prefer to be right in what they spoke 
than the mercy of God extending to them which are weak. And they think they know God who is love. They think they know God who is love. Love tests our revelation of God. If I do not walk in love, I do not know God. For God is love. Somebody say amen. Of course, this man goes through fasting and prayer and everything. And he's in sackcloth and he's saying, God, if we've sinned, forgive us. But we cannot be defeated in this. And I'll tell you why it is so. You see, Jehoshaphat would have thought like any other normal person. And he says, you know, that reckless surrender. And he goes, you know, the judgment is on us. We have nothing to do. Let them come and kill us. Because it was prophesied that I hate, I, I love them that hate the Lord. And I, I, I bring close the ungodly. So it's almost as though that I deserve the punishment that is befalling me. Are you hearing me? But I want to show you a mystery. Second Chronicles chapter 17 verses 3. You're going to love this. When Jehoshaphat was king, the Bible says the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Baalim. Now, I want you to note this. When Jehoshaphat became king, he started to look for a lineage to follow, for an example, for practical distinctions of the kings that had gone before him, the fathers that had gone before him. And he realizes that I have known many fathers and the relationship that they had with God, but I prefer to take the way of my father David. There was a revelation that Jehoshaphat beheld in the spirit and the heart of David, as how David walked with the Lord, and his dealings with the Lord. Whether he had made a mistake or had not, he had an understanding. You see, even in the gospel, for example, hmm? I'll give you an example. For example, now I'll speak to ministers. We choose a course. There are men of God who have gone before me, and I honestly don't want to pattern myself with them. Because I know they are also patterning themselves with a certain pattern that will bring destruction one day. And again, there's a third observer, I think in this equation also, who beholds Jehoshaphat in the story of God judging Israel and what Ahab has done. And some of them think, maybe let us take opportunity and destroy Israel because of the sin of Ahab. This is, Ahab has done stuff Jehoshaphat is not responsible for. Are you listening? But because judgment has befallen the household of Ahab, some people might even assume, no, this extends to his sons and sons, 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 sons. But it, it would give us a voice of reason for us to attack this fellow because of the stories of Ahab that has preceded before. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you grow in God, you will realize that, like if you're a minister of the gospel, a church minister of the gospel, there are people you will never pattern yourself after. Because of how they've lived their lives in the gospel. That is why Paul tells us, imitate me even as I imitate Jesus Christ. Even your submissions to us are to the degree of how much we follow Jesus. We are not supposed to solicit for an indifference in the mind and spirit of submitting. Because in the force and, and face of Submit to the man of God in whatever he tells you. Some of us have inexcusably abused the office of fatherhood. And you hear church people say, oh, don't do this. Why? Because your spiritual father refused you. Yes, but he, there has to be a place that reconciles with the word. Your spiritual father just can't wake up and tell you, go and steal. Oh, but, but papa, you go and steal. Oh. Okay, my spiritual father, I'm submitted. What we see now today is control and manipulation. That's why people are scared in submission. If you don't do this, you will die. If you, ah, yeah, yeah, this will be. Ah, yeah. Now, that's why you, you hear many of you, some of you who have left a few churches, you realize you don't live with a blessing. They have to cast you somewhere. You put up if you're a witness. Put up your hands. Ah, you see? Some people, they leave church, and then the next thing you know, the man of God says, that one. One time, there's, there's this guy, a little girl left the man's ministry. A man I know. And this guy says, she, he told the girl while she was moving the leaving the church, 
you will die eating dust and sowing like a snake. That's the curse. And he calls himself a spiritual father. Listen, people live for Nero too. We don't curse them. We bless them. Because we don't own people. They're not like mobile phones. They belong to the Lord. But today people are like pens. That one stole my people. Even that one stole the other person's person. Can you believe they stole our people? People, some of you are like pens. You're like property. Some people own men like property. The other one stole these people. Then the other one stole. Can you steal a soul? Can you steal, steal, steal a soul? Do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot steal a soul. The souls are of the Lord. How can you steal? Or maybe it's in your mind to think that you also stole. How did they come to your church if you didn't steal? No, no, you tell us. If them leaving your church, they stole them from you. Those ones who came to your church, what did you do? You also stole. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? But the Lord will clear those ones. You can't allow such things in our nation. And in the church of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now back to the story. I was telling you that even us as the as preachers of the gospel. There are people I look at and I'm like uh-uh. If I pattern my ministry like this fellow I'm in trouble. There are fathers of the faith who have gone before us. You understand? And a man of wisdom grows and he says, no. Here, even though I honor him, I don't agree with this kind of pattern. Because it has an end. Do you understand what I'm saying? Samuel could not build like Eli. He couldn't. He served Eli. But he could not build like Eli. And it's up to Eli to either agree or not agree. That's his problem. Jacob could not build like Laban. You understand what I'm saying? Because Laban was a thief. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if by Laban assuming that if Jacob doesn't stay or doesn't build like I want to, therefore he's wrong. And you know, I've realized Laban is wiser than many men of our day. Because at least Laban had, even in his funny spirit, eh, he used to hear God. Yeah. One time God warned him and told him, don't touch that boy. And Laban heard. And says, the Lord told me not to touch you. Even there have issues, but the Lord told me not to touch At least Laban can hear. You understand what I'm saying? Pastors, if somebody wants to go, let them go. And bless them. And don't speak evil about them. Pastors. Pastors. Let them go. And don't speak evil about them. Praise the Lord. Because you ashamed the gospel. And bring to disrepute the gospel. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, that I speak as an apostle. Eh? <laughs> Back to. Praise the Lord. So, of course, there are many kings that had gone before Jehoshaphat. But Jehoshaphat patterned himself after the ways of David. He didn't pattern himself in the ways of Saul or Sam. No. He looked at David and he says, this is it. I want to go the way my father David went. Now, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 14, a similar situation happens to David. David has screwed up. And he has messed up so badly. And he knows that the wrath of the Lord is coming upon him. And in the strongest conviction, David said to God, that I am not God, God, G-A-D. I am in a great strait. Give me the NLT, NL, NLT problem. He says, I'm in a desperate situation. He knows judgment is coming upon him. David replied to God, but let us, the Bible says, fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. Do not let me fall into the hands of human beings. David is saying that even if I've screwed up, 
Let me fall in your hands. But don't hand me to the hand of my enemy. Because if I fall in their hands and they have the ability to kill me, they will destroy me. But if I come into your hand, even with my weakness, you will extend mercy and deal with me as you must deal with me. Because you are a father. Now we are talking about the fathering spirit. It does not destroy. You remember the prodigal son? When he fell, what happened? When he sees his son coming back, he embraces him. He says, I have no business with you. Are ah, you going to die? It's you going to die. No, 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 no. That's who Thank you. Because imagine if the Lord had handed you over to the hands of some men. Some people hate you without cause. Some people hate you. They just wish to hate you. You understand? If you ask some people, why do you hate? They don't even have a reason why they hate. But it's just hate. But thanks be to God. That he has not handed you over to the will of men to destroy you. If men had the power to destroy, surely some of us would have gone. But the Lord could not let them. Now David is a man after God's own heart. But he understands the revelation of grace. And he says, God, even if I have an issue, me I'd rather fall in your hands. There is great mercy. And in that mercy, there is a chastisement of spirit that can keep me from walking again in sin because you still need me to serve you to the end. You surely don't want to destroy me. Like some wish that I'm destroyed. Now, Jehoshaphat knew the king, David, and how he used to think. So he patterned his ministry on the same. Now, in Chronicles 19, they're telling him, That you are going to be destroyed by the wrath of the Lord. And his head is telling him no. Even if I'm to be destroyed by the wrath of God. It shall not and cannot be in the hand of a man. God I'm coming back to your presence. If you are to deal with me. You are not going to deal with me. By handing me over to my enemy. Because I have believed and embraced you as the God of grace. And I'm going to build on that a bit longer. Somebody say amen. Say amen. amen. Now the Bible says, And Jehoshaphat feared, set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the first throughout. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah, Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord of our fathers. That's a man. Res- now, th- there are three things I'm going to show you here. When he says, O Lord of our fathers. He's reminding the Lord of a covenant. Praise the Lord. Art thou not God in heaven? He's proclaiming his sovereignty. Right? And rules not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. That is, he's saying, if I'm in trouble, there are three things I can hold myself on. I can hold myself on the covenant I have with God. I can hold myself on the sovereignty of God, of which nothing can happen. Except he wills it. And in the seventh verse he says, And thou not our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people of Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. So now he's introduced another third thing there. He's introduced the title deed of ownership, the possession. In that, even though there is wrath becoming in 19, I've heard and it's okay. I would rather fall in your hands. Not in the hands of men. I am persuaded that if there is anything to deal with me, chastise my spirit. You won't kill my flesh. Of course there are kings that were destroyed when they screwed up. But I've patterned myself on my father's line of David with whom I understood the loving mercy that deals with a man's spirit and corrects him where he has gone wrong. And he still continues with his servant up to the end. Now, I have a covenant with you. This land they are attacking is of a prized possession that you gave us. And you're sovereign above all. Those three things are powerful when a man is going to war. Integrity of spirit, keep your place. If you read church history, you realize every time Israel went out of their promised land, they were beaten. Every time Israel stood out of the place the Lord had appointed for them to worship him, they were destroyed. That's why some of you are struggling even with certain things. 
Because you, you leave the place where God speaks to you. You leave the place where God speaks to you. Some of you, you can't even settle in the ministry. You, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I, I, am, I, am, am I making some sense? Now, the man says, I proclaim your sovereignty over my life. And I'm persuaded that nothing can befall me except you. But we have a covenant with you. And that's a covenant with grace revealed. You see, grace existed even before the law. Grace and the law coexisted even before it made sense for Moses to bring the Ten Commandments. Grace existed in the Old Testament alongside the law. Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Moses had not yet come. Grace was a revelation already. You understand what I'm saying? Now, this man has put on his life after the line of grace. So he pulls the line of his father, David. Because he knows David obtained great mercy before God, even in his errors. He's saying, you cannot hand me over to these men. You're sovereign. You have a covenant with me. And they're attacking me in the land which you gave me for a possession. You gave us as Israel for a possession. Is that right? For them to come to us and attack us. Yet we are not attacking them. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he says, you gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend. And, and the spirit told me something very interesting. Why did Jehoshaphat, he should have said to our father Abraham. But Jehoshaphat says, you handed it over to our father Abraham, which is thy friend. Why did God call Abraham his friend? James. Chapter 2, verses 23. James 2, 23. He says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, comma, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Why is he a friend of God? Because they imputed righteousness on him. Why did they impute righteousness on him? Because he believed on the Lord. Now, I want you to mark where Jehoshaphat is going. He's quoting David and quoting Abraham. He, he's citing where God has given grace. And, and that is where he anchors his prayer. Tell your neighbor, anchor your prayer in grace. Some of you, when you're praying, you say, God, you say that you shall punish even to the third and fourth and the thousands of generation of them that fear you. Don't punish us, God. You see... When you start building on that, you're going to die because you're proclaiming judgment over yourself with your mouth. A man is a friend of God because he receives grace. When a man opposes the spirit of grace and preaches the law, that man might be a son of God, but he might not and will not be a friend. Oh, people sing, I am a friend of God. Oh, oh. No, no, no. Listen. If you have not embraced the grace message, you're not a friend. Friendship with Abraham begins when this man acknowledges that I cannot be right by my own standing and ability. But I can only by the imputation of righteousness, which I can receive only by faith in him. And that's how it was counted for him. To be called a friend of God. Because he received the imputation of righteousness. Which comes not by works. But by the faith of Jesus. The same righteousness in Romans. David says for. He says like David says. Again the father. He says blessed be the man of whom the Lord imputeth not sin. But he imputed righteousness. Without works. Again David. So Jehoshaphat is quoting David and Abraham. Because he chose a certain lineage. Let's continue. Say amen. amen. And verse 8. He says, you gave it to them to dwell therein. And they built thee a sanctuary. Wherein for thy name saying, when evil comes upon us. The Bible says, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. They built a sanctuary where they would stand before his house. And in thy presence. For thy name is in the house. Praise the Lord. And cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou will hear and help. When God gave them a place of inheritance. The first thing they built was a place of the presence. The children of Israel. And they say in case there is pestilence. In case there is war. In case there is famine. In case there is sword. 
in case there is judgment, in case there is affliction, we must have a place where we can go to and face God. And this is exactly where the man of God went. And I tell people that every person who has seen God a certain way, you must know how to find your God. David made mistakes. And we don't support the mistakes David did. You and I know that. It wasn't good for him to kill Uriah and take Bathsheba, right? And many other mistakes he made. But the difference between David and many men I know in the scriptures, what makes him a man after God's own heart? In fact, the Hebrew calls it a man with the heart of God. In every mistake David made, in every problem or circumstance, situation that he faced, David knew how to find God. He knew how to find God. He knew how to find God. He knew how to go in the presence of God. And let me tell you something. You can never have a cause against the man who knows how to find his God. You can't. He, you, you can try because you don't understand God. But you can never have a cause against the man who knows how to find his God. Who are you to judge the Lord's servant? For if he falls, he falls before God. And if he stands, he stands before God. The law is able to make him stand. But that's a man who knows how to stand before God. I cannot speak that for everybody. Because there are many believers who don't know how to stand before God. You cannot stand before God without the revelation of his sovereignty. You can't stand before God without the revelation of the covenant you have with him. And the place he has appointed you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Spiritual and physical. That's why even in Hebrews, the Bible speaks of the boundaries of habitation. The boundaries of habitation. The place of their settling. That they could seek after him, feel after him and find him. The place must be appointed. The covenant must be established. And the revelation of his sovereignty in your spirit. Somebody say amen. And the man of God had these things. And now verse 10 says, And now behold, the children of Amnon and Moab... And Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel evade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. This is the issue. When the children of Israel come from the wilderness, the Lord warns them not to touch the children of Amnon, not to touch the children of Moab, not to evade the children of Edom. Say. So they are saying when we were coming from Egypt into the wilderness, they met all these tribes. And the Lord warned them not to touch them. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Let's read three scriptures there. In verses 5, he told them, meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a footprint, because I have given Mount Seir and two Esau for possession. is in other words telling them, don't fight when you find the Edomites in their land. It's not your inheritance. Don't fight for it. Now, they skip that in verse 9 and then they go to Moab. And the Lord said unto them, distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given her and to the children of Lot for a possession. Don't touch the Moabites too. In verses 19, he comes to the children of Amnon. And he says, and when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, no matter with them, for I will give, not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it to the children of Lot for a possession. So you see, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites of Seir, God warns the children of Israel, don't touch, don't fight them and do nothing. And the children of God, true to form, Israel did not touch those three kingdoms. They spared them. Now they're in their place of inheritance. These fellows are coming to take the inheritance of Israel. And there's a guy who thinks this is God saying, I have judged. Let me tell you. God cannot judge Jehoshaphat to the level of the man losing his place because of his weakness. You'll understand it one day. The inheritance at that particular point, was not based on the righteousness of Jehoshaphat. It was based on the promise God gave Abraham and his children when he told him, 
leave your family, leave your kinfolk, leave your relatives, and go to a place where I will show you. And it shall be for an inheritance for you and your children. Now they've gone through all of these tests and they are here in the land. And the Lord knows that this is their position. In fact, Jehovah, Jehovah has judged. That's what the meaning is. Jehovah, Shephat, the, the Lord, Jehovah has judged. Jehovah has passed the sentence. This was the judgment of God for the children of Israel to dwell in their inheritance. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together? Now, here is his problem. They are fighting us, yet we are not fighting them. And you had told us not to touch them. Praise the Lord Jesus. So that is what is disturbing who? Jehoshaphat. How you told us not to go touch them. And now we are not evading them, but they are evading our space. Now, verses 12. Our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company. We have no strength against them. And, and let me tell you, if you read uh, Second Chronicles 17, you realize the scriptures are clear that Jehoshaphat had an army that was ready to fight. They didn't need to prepare. They were always ready. But even in the readiness of his army, the strength of their enemies was so big that they had no chance over them. And this is what the man is saying. For will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody opens a war on you? And you feel you don't have the mouth they have. Do I have a witness? Gaya yogera. Neto inamu muagwe. Tosala kuogera angabu wa yogera. You understand what I'm saying? He has guns he's using. And you realize you can't fight the way the guy fights. Because you need to be so evil to fight like him. And we live in a society where people think silence is guilt. So the most silent you are when somebody is speaking against you, they think, ah, this guy must be guilty. Why is he quiet? Because they expect you also to meddle in the fight. But God told you, meddle not with them. Do not battle them. They are not your inheritance. In other words, it doesn't matter what they do to you, they can't evade your space of inheritance. Let me tell you, there is nothing your enemy has in you. He can talk, but his words will only lead him to his own judgment. He can speak because he has a mouth. Some people speak because they have positions. If a man of God like this speaks, he must be right. Okay, let him speak. I tell, I tell the man, even he has God. Hey, it even goes far. Now you, Bambi, you're there. You don't even look like anointed. You, you, Bambi, they don't even know that you have a voice. And then there's a guy, oh, he's so old, he's great. Oh, he has a voice. He's a man of God. He sits in an office. Even the Lord speaks to him any time. I tell now he has spoken the judgment. Oh, what can you do? The man has a bigger mouth than you. He's older than you. You understand? He's bigger than you in every... Yeah, in how you, under, you understand? And sometimes you're like, what can I do? Has somebody ever fought you and they are richer than you? Has somebody ever fought you and they are wiser than you? Has somebody ever fought you and they are more influential than you are? They can reach certain people you can't reach. They can hurt you a certain way. And the more quiet, you know some of you, the more quiet you become, the more they... You understand what I'm saying? And then they take victim mode. Do you know people who shoot you and then they act like you shot them? Yes, sir. But God. Tell your neighbor, but God. This is what Jehoshaphat is going through. Moabites and Monomonites appear like they have a point. They have a reason to attack. And the man is quiet. And then he remembers, no, I have a place where I meet God. Because they are teaching us something. Take it to the Lord in prayer. If somebody messes you up, ah, uh-uh. ah, why did you start? Now can you believe it? That guy did this. This sister did that. You're gossiping and slandering. Now, no. You 
Msaje watunze nyina katonda. Some things can't be spoken in English. Somebody shout hallelujah. Eh? Hey, let them speak. Me I have good. Let them talk all they want. A time will come when they can't talk. Me I have good. Eh? Hey, when they speak ngong ngong me I just go and kneel and say father you heard. I can't talk like them. I can't. Can't I talk like them? I can't. Let them talk. Praise the Lord. Then it says, oh, you just preach. And then I get my gospel. And then I preach. Rubega Sirwana. Men are defiling altars. People are coming hungry. Then you bring your wall. And you put it on the pulpit for two hours. Tell your neighbors and you I have Jesus. Eh? Now I do what? Even me, I, I open my mouth and start saying, now No, 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 no. Rakatele bajete. Zokopakatalamando zibara. And God tells you, continue preaching. Have you ever been in a situation where you speak about a man and God hears you and then he goes and does like this. He pours more on the man. Then you talk. Then God says. Then you talk more. Hey, even if he increases. For us, we know his end. He can go up, but there is always coming down. Then God does like... Somebody shout hallelujah. And if they fight you, this I prophesy on your life. You're going to go upward. The more they fight you, the more you increase. The more they fight you, the more you go upward. The more they speak words about you, the more God will exalt you. When they talk issues about you, don't cry. Uh -uh. Just open your arms and say, God, I receive. God will just do like this. God has a way of, of, of disturbing your enemies. And he makes sure your success is broadcast. You imagine your enemy sitting on WhatsApp at night and they are seeing photos of you. <laughs> then they select, then they delete. Pua. Then after one month, somebody sends she qua. And they cannot avoid. They can't say delete without seeing. No. They load pa. 163 KB is pua. And then they see. Yes. And that's what will happen in your life. The Lord will broadcast you through men that you least expect. <laughs> Tell somebody he will not hand me over to the will of my enemies. Jehoshaphat told God, my eyes are on you. But they are not anywhere. They are, they are on you. The Bible says, all Judah stood before God. Again, standing before God. With their little ones and their wives and their children. And God has a thing for children, by the way. Jonah 4.11. Have you read it before? Jonah 4.11. He says that should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, where in are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right and their left hand, and also so much cattle. Who cannot discern between their left hand and right? He was caring for the children. He knew there were children there too. Anyway, then when they were praying, 
a certain Levite called Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jael, a son of Metaniah, a friend to Apostle Grace, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Haven't you seen it? A Levite of the son of Asaph. The Bible says, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, how can ye all, the Bible says, how can ye all, Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thou saith the Lord, this is not a prophet, this is a Levite, and if you are a reader of the Bible, you will know the difference between the prophet of 19 to and, the, and why the Lord uses a Levite to extend prophecy. You will understand why God uses a Levite in the place of the seer. You'll understand why he uses a Levite. Because Levites were like teachers. Do you know that? And that saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. <laughs> and he said, How can you all, Judah, tomorrow go ye down against them? Behold, they come up by the cliff of Jesus, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye. Now this was before God. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. The salvation of the Lord with you. So we are not just telling men who just stand there like this. No. They are standing before God. And salvation comes. Fear not. Not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord worshipping. That's why we, that, when a man worships amidst. When a man starts praising God amidst his circumstances. That man has been convinced of his victory. And the Bible says, and the Levites of the children of Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And as they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established, believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Now, prophecy there is not prophet, prophet, but the man which proclaims the word of the Lord. And the next verse says, hey, and I'm not, not against prophets. Please don't get me wrong. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of his holiness. Are you hearing me? In the middle of battle, as they went out in the army to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. You see, why? Because that's in the hands of whom the man agrees to fall in. So he's speaking mercy, mercy. His mercy endures forever. Why? Because he would rather fall in the hands of the God who will extend mercy. Now, he goes speaking the mercy of a God in whose hands he should fall and not in the hand of men. Oh! Did you understand it? Because remember, David says, I would rather fall in the hand of God for there is great mercy. Are you hearing me? And not in the hand of man. Now, Jehoshaphat understands the revelation of grace through David. And Abraham, the friend which has righteousness imputed. And now, when he's telling guys to sing, he's telling them, just go singing of the mercy of the Lord. Because you are persuaded, even in this, you're in his hands. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And the Bible says, and when they began to sing and praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Amnon, Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Confusion came in the camp and they started destroying each other. And the Bible says, For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy each other. Like Moab and Ammon fought with the children of Seir. After they were destroyed, they also turned to each other and started to kill each other until no man was left. They look at religion. And the next verse says, 
says, And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, Sakota, Zirebakata, when he came to the watch tower, watch tower, the Bible says, They looked unto the multitudes, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And the next verse says, and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewel, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days in gathering spoil. Three days. Banange! You praise God. Men kill each other. You come picking gold and silver. And you can't finish for three days. That means the Lord will make you rich. In the decimations of your enemies. The devil is in trouble. Tell your neighbor the devil is in trouble. He's your enemy. He's your enemy. The devil is your enemy. Not people. Now, the Bible says... And on the fourth day, they were assembled themselves in the valley of Berasha. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Berasha. And to this day. Now, Berasha means blessing. That means that what was supposed to be calamity became what? Blessing. And the next verse says, And then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem. And Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. And so the realm, listen, of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest around and about. And he reigned over Judah, 35 years old when he began to reign, 25 years in Jerusalem. And his mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shimei. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he walked in the way of Asa his father and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And how be the high places were not taken away. That means he didn't remove many of the idols because the people had not prepared their hearts unto the God, the God of their fathers. This was not him not honoring God. It was that the some people who had uh, maintained uh, witchcraft and everything. Point is, his realm was of peace and of quiet. Why? Because he understood the God of grace. Praise the Lord Jesus. Sometimes you love to learn to praise God in situations like this. The devil shall be defeated. And if they that are used of the devil don't walk out of the devil, I worry for them. Because they might be burned also. Praise the Lord. God is on your side. I've understood the power of praise. The power of worship. Where you simply just dance your way into victory. <laughs> Who has the final say? We're going to dance for five minutes. You're going to see how things are going to change for you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor we're going to dance for Jesus. You're going to dance out of poverty. You're going to dance out of lack. You're going to dance out of disease. You're going to dance out of the words of your enemies. You're going to dance out of struggle. Jankole David Unjina in Bankole David Unjina Tenda. Ankole David Unjina in Bankole David Unjina Tenda. I want us to praise God. Ankole David Unjina in Bankole David Unjina Tenda. Ankole David Unjina in Bankole David Unjina Tenda. Yes, to Mulunji, yes, to Mulunji, 
the mountain, down the valley, on the line, and in Panero. is mine. Tell somebody victory is mine. The enemy is judged. Some of you when you go back home you're going to hear things have slayed each other. <laughs> Poverty and disease will fight each other. <laughs> People fight, but but what you, you things tell somebody things are going to fight each other for my sake, and they'll kill each other in the name of Jesus. You're gonna have testimonies this week. You know, some of you are like, Nay, God, the year is ending today. There's some people saying, But the year is ending when I've, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I have good news for you. Today, the Lord is going to vindicate you. Today, God is pleading your cause tonight. Tonight, one day you look back and you have stories to tell. Also, you say, I let me tell you, I remember years ago, some people raised dust on us. I started to see men hitting each other. I just stood and observed. It was like a movie. And I said, things are going to turn against each other. Those who are fighting you, they are going to turn against each other. And start beating each other. Don't fight. Don't fight. Don't fight. The battle is the Lord. Jehovah has judged. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now give me only three minutes. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just come. 
Those of you who are receiving Jesus, please come. If you have never given Jesus your life and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, come now. Somebody celebrate to Jesus. Ask your neighbor, are you born again? If they are not, encourage them to come. Friend forever. Come. They are coming. I wonder where would these young men have been if there was no Fanero? Just imagine. Just imagine where they would have been if there was no Fanero. Are they over? There's somebody coming? Alright. You're going to repeat this word after me. Say Jesus. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and rose again for my sins. Tonight, I believe that you are the true son of God and I receive you as Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.